In 1926, an eccentric Canadian multimillionaire, Charles Vance Miller, died of a stroke. He didn't have any dependents or near relations and decided to write a will that was, quote, necessarily uncommon and capricious. The will stated that everything not accounted for in the rest of the will was to be given to the Toronto woman who gave birth to the most children in the 10 years following his death. And that led to what would be known as the Great Stork Derby. The will was litigated in relative public obscurity for six years until the Canadian government tried to put forward a bill that would stop its fulfillment. But then that dry sand affected tons of media attention to the will and the government backed down after getting 14,000 letters opposing their decision. So six years after he croaked, the Great Stork Derby had really begun. The media scoured birth records and found the Toronto women who had given birth to the most children in the last six years. Most of them were really poor. This was, after all, three years into the Great Depression. One of the frontrunners even had a child die in the aftermath of a rat attack. And when the 10 years were up, the court finally decided to educate the rules of the Derby. Their decisions were likely influenced by classist, racist, and eugenicist ideologies and pretty much eliminated some of the frontrunners. For example, they decided that stillborn babies and babies born out of wedlock didn't count. And in the end, four middle-class Toronto women split the sum of $440,000. Each of the women had had nine children and got what would be about $2.24 million in today money.